Hey everyone, if you're looking for a Soapmaker 3 tutorial, I hope to help you with that. My name is Tammy. I'm the owner of Walnut Creek Bath Boutique. I have been on Soapmaker for about three and a half years now, and I feel like I have a fairly decent grasp of how to use the program. Now, I am by no means saying I am an expert. I don't know everything and I still learn a lot. Your best source of information is gonna be that Facebook group, but to get you started, to help you, I just thought I would go and, and show you my software, show you my program and, and how I use it. And if that helps you, then I'm tickled. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. If you have anything that I missed or, or a better way of doing something, feel free to leave that in the comments too. Uh, I, like I said, I still learn all the time. I learn all the time from the Facebook group, so. Definitely join and be active in that. You'll learn a lot. Uh, but yeah, if you like this sort of video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Share on your social media so other people can find it. And subscribe. I will hope to do everything I can to help you. And if you have anything in particular you need to know, let me know. And I will do what I can to uh, bring a video to you for that. So let's get on with the videos. Again, thanks for watching and I will see you on the other side. Okay, today I'm gonna to finish up the tabs. That last video was a lot longer than I meant for it to be. It should not have taken that, should not have been that long, <laughs> but I tend to ramble, so I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, we're gonna go through these other tabs and then we're done with the tabs. Um, we went through the preferences, my recipes. This is just a list of where all your recipes are housed. You have all your folders. I have a lot of folders. And let's just kind of go through my folders and see if that gives you guys any sort of help in how you wanna set up yours. I like folders. I like organizing my um, recipes. You can organize by group or as a sortable list. You know, I can't, you know, what folder did I put my tallow cream in? I can go over here and click on view as a sortable list it's showing all except archive because, you know, maybe you want to see the older recipes, maybe not. But if I start typing in tallow, you can see all of my current recipes made with my tallow. If I want to do um, archive, it's separate. So these are the archived recipes that I made with tallow and then all except archived recipes that are made with tallow. So what's nice about this, is if I can't remember what folder I put that in, if you highlight it and then click back over to organize by group, it's still highlighted and it tells you that it's in the face group or folder. So that's kind of nice. I really like that, especially on the supply list. I use that a lot on my supplies. I organize my bar soap by year. I rarely make the same bar with the same oils and the same everything over and over and over again. I rarely do that. So if you want, if we scroll down here, I added a Z to 2017 bar soap. And these are all the soaps I made in 2017. And then 2018, not so much in that year. Uh, so those are my bar soaps that I made exclusively for those years. I haven't added my Z to 2020 yet because it's still January. I still have all of these in stock or most of them. That's how I listed my soaps. Or my, yeah, how, that's how I list my soaps. I have added soap to the front of the recipe name. I do that with everything. I do that with my creams. I have goat milk cream. I like that when I am over in my product list, that's how I list my, my recipes or my stock. So here's like my Dio. I have recipes here from Wholesale Supplies Plus. But anyway, um, I have one I bought from Etsy. Um, if I have a recipe that I've gotten from another source, I will, I will name the source um, in my recipe group so I know what I'm getting, know what I'm doing, what I'm making, all of that stuff. This is face recipes to try. Face is things that I have in stock. Um, hair care to try. I have shampoo bars, shampoo bar tests, shampoo bar tests made. So I have my notes inside. 
Um, so yeah, that's, I don't remember why I put an asterisk, why I wanted hot process recipes on top. I don't remember why I did that. And so like, I want to try these recipes, something in my head, I formulated them or I got them from a source and I thought, you know, I want to try that. I will go ahead and enter it in Soapmaker 3. Sometimes I look at the price point and think, there's no way I'm making that. It costs too much for me to make. There's no way I'm going to make any money on it. And then I don't make it because I see the cost of what it would cost to make it. That's just how I do it. Then you have your supplies. So these are my supplies. Um, yeah, we went over the oils in the first in the first um, video. So I'll just go over. So if you check almond butter and hit save and hit OK, almond butter is now listed in my oil category. I'm really not going to use almond butter, so I'm going to uncheck that and hit save. So if there's an oil that you use that you um, don't see in your list, hit more oils and you can add it. What I did do is like I have beef tallow and I have beef tallow organic or I have coconut oil organic and what you can do is hit a new oil and let's just do coconut oil let's just do virgin okay so I'm doing this the specific gravity for your new oil has been set to 0 0.095 um, you can change it in the oil properties box. So when you add a brand new oil, you're gonna have this oil properties box come up. And basically, if, you, if you're just doing organics, it's super easy because all we're gonna do is take coconut oil down here at the bottom. Let me move this to make sure you're seeing it. You're copying the properties from coconut oil because it's the same properties, it's just one's organic and one's not. Maybe. There. And you can copy properties. And you want to replace all properties of coconut oil virgin with those of coconut? Yes. Save it. And then you have your new oil that you're using. So I did that with all my organic oils because those are separate stocks for me. They're separate in my recipes. And so, yeah, that's how I do that. If you can't copy it, then um, good luck finding all this stuff because you'll have to input it manually. <laughs> I, I, would, I would choose not to do that. So I'm gonna get out of there. So that's your supplies on your base oils. You can add notes um, if you want. My additives, I do have notes added to my additives. So let's look at fragrance oil. So I have the name of the supplier in front of the name of the fragrance. And so I, somebody on, a, on the Facebook group told me to do that. I mean, it, they didn't tell me, I mean, I read to do that. And I'm so glad, so glad I started off with that. It helps a lot, especially if you order, like I've ordered uh, Volcano, cool, cool Volcano Blue, I, I don't know. I've ordered that from three different suppliers. Peppermint, who four or five of those bottles trying to test out which ones do I like, which supplier has the best scent. And um, that helps me a lot. And when I'm making the recipe, I know which bottle I'm using in that recipe because I'm pulling from that supplier's uh, rosemary mint. Many recipe, many suppliers have rosemary mint. It's an Aveda dupe, smells wonderful. Um, so yeah, I may try rosemary mint from another supplier to see if I like it any better. Maybe, maybe not. Aztec's pretty good. You can edit these fields. And so this is what I've just kind of copied and pasted in from the manufacturer's website. So I went to Aztec Rosemary Mint. I found their scent description. I found whether it was skin safe or not. And I put in here notes about um, vanillin and whether it's phthalate free and all of that good stuff. Sometimes I'll add, um, a little more information, um, like this Candle Science English Garden. I have my soap usage, lotion usage, uh, performance is a three. They have the little leaves, so it would be good in soy. Um, so yeah, I don't do that with all of my fragrances, but I have tried to be pretty good about entering that in on my fragrances. 
Um, some of my suppliers, those notes go away if the fragrance goes away, and then I don't have it to refer back to. It's a lot more time consuming, a lot more time consuming to do the note field, but I found I have found it helpful. So these are my fragrances. I have a lot. I have a problem with fragrances, don't we all? <laughs> don't we all? I do have an, a folder for fragrance oil, fragrance oil candles. And these are fragrances that are specifically not body safe, or I have no intention of using those in a body product. Most of the time, they're not skin safe, and that's how I keep that separate. Uh, let's see, what else can we look at? In colors, I put the color, I put the supplier in the color. So fragrance oil, flavors, and, and colorants, I do put the supplier of where I purchased that mica from and whether their eyes or lips safe, skin safe, bath bomb safe, whatever. When I first started, I had very few folders. And so anything that was used in a bath bomb went into my bath bomb folder. Anything I made to make a lotion went into just lotions. And when I got a little bit more comfortable with those ingredients, a little more knowledgeable about what is an emulsifier, what is a humectant, um, I started separating those out and really um, figuring out what folder they should go in so I know exactly what I'm, I'm dealing with. So those are my ad additives. Have as many folders as you want that make sense to you. Same thing with packaging. We can just go through. I have them listed. I try to list them by size. I have my bottles, let's see, boxes. I don't have a lot of boxes. Let's see, jars. I've gone through some jars in the past. I don't use six ounce jars anymore, um, but they're, they're, they're just there. Metal tins. So yeah, that's your, that's your supplies. You have your blends. I use, I, I do my like base ingredients or base blends in a different way than using the blends. So I probably, I'm not the best one to, to like explain plans very well. You can print out your packaging if you're wanting to do an inventory and you need your sheet without having the computer with you. You can print it out and make your counts that way. And then again, you can go to this purchases and update your amount left. So if you're doing end of the year stock inventory, you can edit it. And you can say, well, I don't have 8.1, I only have eight ounces left. And then you can save that, and that's gonna update your stock. You can view the order, where you ordered that from, and see what date you ordered it, uh, how, what else you ordered with it. If that's important, you can edit it. So if you made a mistake on that, input, inputting that information, you can edit it from this window. Um, you can remove stock, but that is, if it got damaged in any way, if it expired, anything like that, that's where you would remove the stock. Um, you would click remove, you can remove all of it. Um, you can remove a certain quantity of it. Um, and then you would explain why you're removing it. I would say write off and probably expired down here. You can go to recipes and see what recipes have I ever made with argan oil? And I have quite a few recipes. I have some in archive. I used to make beard oils all the time, shampoo bars. Um, so yeah, that's where you can find it's like, okay, I know I've used beef tallow in a recipe. What recipes have I used that in? And you can go there for it. Usage last year. So here you can see my supplier, when I purchased it, the batch number, the date I made, and what I made um, for coconut oil all of last year. And then you can see that I used 596 ounces of coconut oil last year. So that's kind of neat. I don't really use that very much. There's quite a bit here. It's very robust, very robust. I'm gonna get out of here. We're, we're going a little long again. I don't mess with graphs. So I really, I'm not gonna convert, I'm not gonna talk about graphs or convert. Specific gravity, yeah, I don't mess with this. Molds, 
I have created all my molds that I use. I have a tall and skinny mold. I have one that's like a triple bar. I have that it adjusted to like, if I want just a two inch depth or even a one inch depth in that mold, then I can resize a recipe and use the same mold, but only have it one inch thick if that's what I want. If you're wanting to make a new mold, you can say, okay, well, it's a divided. So that would be like your, you know, obviously you're divided. You have your um, PVC pipes if you use those, um, shapes, irregular, unknown, or rectangular. So then what I, what I would do is just put, well, it's a 10 inches long, it's eight inches wide, and I want to fill it to three inches tall. Then you give it a name. And then whenever you want to resize a recipe to fit that, then it's very easy to do. And then shopping, I really don't do much with shopping. Not, I'm, not, I'm not the one for you on this one. I've never used this production planning tool and probably now is not the time. So thanks for watching. Hopefully you got something out of it. Let me know if I need to make any changes to these videos. Please feel free to comment below. Uh, no haters, you know, I, everybody does things differently. I, I am no by, by no way saying that this is the only way to do things. I just wanted to, I just want to help anybody that needs some help. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video though, and, and subscribe if you haven't already and share on social media. That would help me a lot. And yeah, I will, uh, think about some other videos. I have, I have some thoughts in mind, but I need to maybe spend a little time of doing a little more preparing for them and I will get those out to you soon. In the meantime, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.